welcome back to Cardiff Ready for Teens. For those of you who might not know, Cardiff Ready for Teens is a place where teens can come together with other teens to learn about spiritist teachings and topics in a way that is more relatable to us in the 21st century as teenagers. As you all probably know by now, we've been reading through the Spirits book together for quite a while now. We're almost halfway through the book, and we've been going through it word by word, question by question, to really try and understand what's being said in the Spirits book. And putting it in a way that might make things, might make more sense to us in how we live our lives today. So the chapter we left off on was in the return to, return to corporeal life, and we were talking about earthly sympathies and antipathies. And what they mean by sympathies is just harmony and having like the same vibration, kind of being similar to someone. And by anthropy, anthropies, they mean the opposite. They mean not being in harmony with someone. We left off on question 391, and that's where we'll pick up right now. Does the antipathy between two individuals arrive first in the one whose spirit is worse or in the other whose spirit is better? So they're asking, so antipathy, so like how you don't really get along, you don't really click with that spirit. The, between two individuals, so it's like two people and you don't really click. Does it happen in the spirit that's worse first or the spirit that's better first? And the spirit is answered. It arises in both, but the cause and effects are different. An evil spirit feels antipathy towards anyone who may be able to judge and unmask it. Upon seeing a person for the first time, it perceives that the person will disapprove of it. It dislikes, then changes into hatred and envy, which inspires it to do with desire which inspires it the desire to do evil. The good spirit, on the other hand, is repul is repulsed by the evil one because it knows it will not be understood by the other, and that neither share the same sentiment. However, Aware of its higher moral principles, it feels neither hatred nor jealousy towards the other. It is content to simply avoid and pity it. So they're saying that this antipathy, this disharmony, it happens in both the spirits, but it's the causes and the effects are different. Usually the e evil spirit is just judging people and they don't really care and they're not thinking about the consequences. The good spirit, on the other hand, the one that's better, they realize that, okay, we don't really get along, we don't really flow, but they just kind of push that off, and they know that it, that spirit just needs to learn. And now we're on to the next part of the chapter, which is called Forgetfulness of the Past. So question 392. Why does the incarnate spirit lose the memory of its past? So why, when we incarnate, why do we lose the memory of our past? And the spirit said, Human beings cannot and must not know everything. God, God, out of the divine wisdom, wills it to be this way. Without that veil that hides certain things from them, they would be dazzled like ones who pass suddenly from the darkness into the light. By forgetting their past, they are more fully, th fully themselves in pr the present. So, they're saying that we can't know everything and we shouldn't know everything because it would be really hard to improve if we've known all the terrible things that we've done. And that God wants it to be this way. He wants us to not remember everything. And he said that without this veil, we might not be able to improve. We might not be able to make up for our mistakes that we've made. And by forgetting the past, we're able to do that more willingly, more easier. Question 393. How can individuals be responsible for their deeds and redeem their wrongs if they cannot remember them? How can they profit from the experience acquired in lives that have fallen in forgetfulness? Could we understand that life's tribulations might be a lesson for them if they could remember what they had caused them in the first place? But since they do not remember them at all, each existence is as if it were the first, and it is thus that that they are always having to start over. How can this be reconciled with the justice of God? So basically, it was a long question, and they said, so how can you improve if you don't know what your mistake was? If you don't know what your mistake was, how can you be like, oh, I'm sorry, and fix it? And they're saying, how can, how is this justified by God? What is, like, how does this go with God's justice? And the Spirit said, 
With each new existence, spirits gain more intelligence and can better distinguish between good and evil. Where would their merit be if they remembered their entire past? Their spirit, the spirits enter their life of origin, the spirit life. Their entire previous life unfolds before them. They see the wrongs they committed and which, which are the cause of their suffering, as well as it would have kept them from committing them in the first place. They understand the justice of the position assigned to them, and they thus desire a new existence that can redeem one that has elapsed it. They seek trials similar to those they have already experienced or struggle, struggles they believe will be appropriate for their, their advancement. They ask spirits who are of a higher order to help them in the new task they are about to undertake, for they know the spirits who will be given to them as their guide in a new existence will endeavor, will endeavor to enable them to repair their wrongs of the past by giving them a sort of intuition about them. This same intuition is the, the thought, the wrongful desire, which frequently assaults you and which you indistinct, instinctively resist, most of the time attributing your resistance to the principles you have received from your parents. However, it is the voice of conscious speaking to you, and this voice is the memory of the past, a voice that warns you not to fall into your errors you committed previously. In that new existence, if a spirit endures its trials with courage and resistance and resists them, it evolves and will ascend in the spirit's hierarchy, where it will return to be among them. So that was really long. Let's break up the big pieces in that. So what they're saying here is that as you with each new existence, you're gonna be learning more and you're gonna be you're there's you have more intelligence, you're gonna understand it. And in the spirit world, you remember all of this. So it's not like you're going to forget forever. When you go back to the spirit world, you remember. And in the spirit world is when you see all your mistakes and see all the wrong you've done and see why you're suffering and everything comes together. And then to now try and fix for your mistakes, you say, okay, let's start trying to fix these. So you seek trials and you seek help and you have all these things going on so that when you go into the world, when you go on to a corporal world, you can not remember it but you have people helping you to not trip in these mistakes and consciously you're trying to do the best that you can and by this that we're going to move up in the hierarchy and then until we're at that stage of perfection and we no longer have to reincarnate like this and then Alan Kardec puts his own comment in and he says if during our corporeal life we do not have a precise memory of what we were and of what God or evil we did in previous lifetimes, we nevertheless have an intuition of them. Hence, our instinctive tendencies have a remnant of our past, about which are conscious, which represents the desire that we have conceived to no longer commit the same wrongs, warn us that we must resist. So they're saying that in our conscious, when you think that we have this great idea, there's people helping us, trying to put that idea in our head, saying, okay, don't do this or do this and they're helping us and this and this is all the way that that's going to help us learn and improve because if we think about it what if we did something terrible what if we killed one person or many people or made many people suffer how are we gonna make up for that mistake if we look at someone and know oh in a previous life I was so mean to you oh in a previous life I did this and this and this so not knowing helps us be able to move on and make up for our mistakes. Question 394. On worlds more advanced than ours, where beings are not subject to all our physical needs and infirmities, do they understand that they are happier than we are? Happiness in general is relative. We feel it by comparing it with a less happy state. In some, some of those worlds, though better than ours, have not yet reached the state of perfection and their inhabitants must have their own annoyances. Even though the wealthy among us do not suffer the anxiety of material needs like the poor, they are no less subject to the same types of tribulations that embitter their lives. Thus, I would ask whether the inhabitants of those worlds in their own situations feel as unhappy as we do, and whether they also complain about their fate, since they do not have a memory of a less evolved existence for comparison. 
So they're asking here. So if people, if we feel unhappy sometimes, and we feel, and we go through many struggles, and we're sad, what about the people who are in worlds that are less evolved than ours? So that's what they're asking about. So if we're unhappy and sad and struggle, what about the worlds that are worse than ours? How do they? What do they feel? And the and the spirits answered. Two different am- answers apply to this question. There are worlds among those you are speaking about on which the inhabitants have a clear and exact memory of their past lives. You should understand that these can can and do know how to appreciate the happiness that good per- God permits them to enjoy. However, there are worlds whose inhabitants Situations, as you say, in better condition than yours, are no less subjects to great annoyances and even misfortunes. They do not appreciate their happiness because they do not remember an even unhappier state. Nevertheless, if they do not appreciate it as incarnates, they will as spirits. So what they're saying here is that in some worlds, the people know their past and they can understand their past. So they they understand that what they have now is better. But for other people, on other worlds, they said that they just have the same kind of misfortune as we do. They struggle through things, they're happy sometimes, they're sad sometimes, so it's just like us. But they said, nevertheless, if they do not appreciate it as incarnates, they will as spirits. So even if you don't appreciate what you have right now, when you get to the spirit world, you're going to see that what you had was better than what you used to have. And then Alan Kardec puts his comment in and he says, In the forgetfulness of past existences, especially when they were painful, is there not something providential where the divine wisdom is revealed? It is one of the more highly evolved worlds when this memory of unhappy lives is nothing more than a bad dream, that the memory of such lives resurfaces. On less evolved worlds, however, would present misfortune not be increased by memory of everything that had endured in the past. Therefore, we conclude that everything that God has made is well made, and it is not our place to criticize the divine word and say how God ought to have regulated the universe. So what they're saying here is that, isn't it that on the highly, on the more highly evolved worlds, they remember more of their past, but they're also not affected by it, by it as much because they're more evolved. They understand more. But on the less evolved world, if we knew our past, would that really help us or would that make us worse? Would that make us keep holding grudges and keep making the same mistakes? And that's why he said, so we can't, we can't judge what God did. Everything that God did is perfect in the way that he did it. So we can't judge what he did And it's not our right to say what he should have done and what he shouldn't have done. And then Alan Kardec continues. The remembrance of our former personalities would entail serious inconvenience. In certain cases, it could cause us a great deal of humiliation. In others, it could exile our pride and so hinder our free will. God has given us just what is necessary and sufficient for us to improve ourselves. The voice of conscience and our instinctive and our instinctive tendencies keep us from doing harm. We would further add that if we had the remembrance of our own former personal acts, we would also be able to remember those of other people, and such knowledge could have the most unpleasant effect on our social relationship. Since we do not always have a good reason for being proud of our past, it is almost always a blessing for a veil to have been thrown over it. This concurs perfectly with the doctrine of the spirits regarding worlds that are more evolved than ours. On those worlds where nothing reigns except good, there is nothing painful about remembering the past. That is why previous lifetimes are frequently remembered as easily as we remember what we did yesterday. As for the sojourn, that one that may have had a, on less evolved worlds, the memory of it is nothing more than a bad dream, as we have stated. So, again, what they're saying here is that it's a blessing. Like, people are trying to change and say, oh, why can't I know the past? I want to know my past lives, and I know want to know what I would, 
I did because it would make it it would make it easier. Some people think it would make it easier, but it actually won't because think about all the grudges we're still gonna hold. And since we know that we're always moving up, we're always evolving, it's it's very likely that in our past lives we were rather at the same state, we haven't evolved, or we were below it. We had to be below it because we've all been working up. So only when you get to the more evolved world where they understand and they're always happy. They understand their mistakes and they're not going to be thrown down by whatever happened in their past. So they can remember it like they rem- like we remember yesterday. But if you're still trying to work over these mistakes and you're not ready to know your past lives yet, then it's not your time. And we shouldn't really question it. Question 395. Can we obtain any revelations about our former lives? So can we have anything about our former lives, any sort of hints at our former lives? And the spirit said, not always. Nevertheless, many know who they were and what they did. If they were permitted to speak openly, they would make curious revelations about the past. So you don't always have these revelations or these facts about the past. But some people who do know, they don't know everything about their past life. They don't remember it perfectly, but they know that they were this kind of person, they had this kind of job, and then they did this and this and this. So if they were permitted to speak only, they say here, then they would make curious revelations. So sometimes when people do know, they and if they were just uh, going to speak about it openly, maybe they would start saying some crazy things about the past that maybe happened, maybe didn't, but they're over-dramatizing it. Question 396. Some people believe they have a vague memory of an unknown past. It appears as a fleeting image of a dream, which in vain they try to retain. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't this belief simply be an illusion? So when people have a little dream, and it's like a vague memory in the back of your mind thinking, oh, in my past life I was a doctor, oh, I did this, oh, this person was my sister, some vague little memory, like a dream. So wouldn't that just be an illusion or could it actually be true? And the spirit said, It is sometimes real, but more often it is an illusion to be guarded against. It could simply be the effect of an overexcited imagination. So sometimes this is true and sometimes it's a hint at what your past was and what something that happened in your past. But more, they said more often than not, so most times... It's just an illusion. You're just dreaming. Because if I think right now, oh, I really want to be a doctor, I can create a whole image of me in a past life being a doctor. But that could just be an imagination. Well, if I, that case right there, it was an imagination. I'm just imagining that that happened. But for some, but in some cases, it might be real. But more time, most times, it's just people imagining things and wanting it to be real. Question 397. In corporeal existences of a more evolved nature than ours, is the memory of previous lives more precise? So in the world that are more evolved than ours right now, do they have more precise memories? So say on Earth, only a few people here and there can know only bits and pieces about their past lives. But now what about a more evolved world? Do they have more things that they can see from their past? And the spirit said, yes, as the body becomes less material, they become easier to remember. The memory of the past is clearer for those who inhabit worlds of higher orders. So yeah, it's that's 100% true. The the people in the less evolved world, they see less of their past than the more highly evolved worlds. And that comes with evolving. If you evolve, then you get that right to see more of your past because they know that you're not going to change really who you are or you're still going to be able to overcome and you're going to understand the things of your past better than those of the less evolved world. Question 398. Since people instinctively, since people's instinctive tendencies are a reminiscence of their past, then by studying those tendencies, can they know about the wrong they committed? So they're saying, so if you study what you did in the past, saying, oh, I see that I did this mistake and then this mistake and then this mistake. So can they fix it by doing that, by studying what they did wrong? 
And the spirit said, undoubtedly, to a certain point. However, it is necessary to take in, a, in account that improvement may always be taken place in the spirit, and resolution it made is in its errant state. Their present existence could, in fact, be much better than the preceding one. So yeah, they could always do that, and maybe they are getting more evolved, so they will be able to do that, because they were better in this life right now than the past one. So they will be able to look back and say, oh, that was a mistake, now I fixed it, maybe now I should fix it, and see what they could do. And then there's a second part to this question, and it says, could it be worse? In other words, could persons commit wrongs in their past existences, which they had not committed in the preceding in their present existence, which they had not committed in preceding ones? So could you have do worse mistakes in this life right now than you did in your past life? And the spirit said, that depends on their advancement. If they do not yet know how to resist trials, they could be drawn to commit new wrong errors as a consequence of the positions they themselves had chosen. But such wrong indications stationarily state rather than an aggressive one because spirits may advance or remain stationary. They do not regress. So they're saying here that um, when you're less involved, maybe like in one live you did all these mistakes and then your next life, the, like let's say it's your present life, then you did a whole bunch of other mistakes. So you didn't fix any of the old mistakes and you just made more mistakes for yourself. But that wouldn't be going backwards. That's just kind of staying in the same place. You haven't evolved. We talked about that way in the beginning, how it's like a staircase, how you're going up or you can sit on the stairs and you can not move and you'll just be stuck there sitting on that same step for a long time until you decide to get up and move, but you're never going to go backwards down the stairs. So that's where we'll leave off today. But before we leave off, I'd like to read our, our daily message from the Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Pacon for today's date, August 29th. This one's titled Strength. What does not destroy me makes me stronger. Tough times can make us stronger and wiser. Knowing this doesn't really make tough times any easier, though, at least not while we're going through them. But it's worthwhile to remind ourselves often of this truth. Of course, we get stronger, not simply because we go through tough times, but because we can call upon our best selves to find our way through them. We draw on our humor, patience, courage, and other qualities, and in doing so, learn the power of our inner resources. I will survive the difficult periods in my life, and after each one, I will be stronger more, and more resilient person. I wish everyone the best of luck as school is starting again, and if at all you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to talk about, whether it's about Cardiac Radio or if it's about the book or if it's about school and you just want to talk, feel free to email me at cardiacradio for teens at gmail.com and I'll get back to you right away. I'm Bia and this is Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening. This has been Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>